Hi there. Uh, here we are again, back at uh, the machine. Uh, it's uh, miserable weather out there. It's raining, sunshine, showers. Ah, it's just a pain. Uh, but anyway, um, just a an update really. I've been doing little bits of building and uh, and messing around. Um, we're we're all good now on the floating head. I did a little short on that. Um, it's good to go. I haven't got anything that I can um, cut out the minute to show it working, but it's actually one hell of a lot quicker than uh, messing around with the OMIC sensor. Uh, I've still got the OMIC on there, uh, and I do use it uh, when we do thin materials, so I just switch between the two uh, because it's there. Uh, it, it, it doesn't hurt. Uh, it's spring-loaded, so it's nice and light. I mean, it is light. Not too light, otherwise it'll bounce up and down. But uh, yep, yeah, it all works. It's all uh, in there. It's pluses. It is quick. It is very, very quick. I mean, you can crash that torch down onto the plate um, at a rate of knots, and it detects it so quickly. Uh, and then it's straight back up to its pier site, and then just drive on. So it is uh, already. It's quicker. Um, Downsides, um, it makes the beam heavier again. It makes the, it pushes the torch out, uh, as you can see from there to there, which is a good 70 millimeters, 78, 70, 80 millimeters, uh, which is not good for the follower because I wanted the follower to be, you know, torch there. Well, I wanted the torch bang on the follower. So uh, that hasn't happened. I'll work on that. There, there are ways of making this a lot, lot um, shorter. Uh, I could do away with this, this setup, these rails setup. I could put um, maybe just a single high wind on there. Could probably get away with a single high wind, a big one. Uh, I've got spare rail, so I could use it, and then I could put a little high wind in here. Uh, you know, square rail. And that would push it, push the torch more or less back to where it was, which is pretty much in line with that, that bolt there. By the time you've got 25 mil high wind bearing, it would take you out to there. Um, we should be able to save a bit of space. I haven't worked out, I haven't done the maths in my head, and maths not being my strong point uh, means I'm probably wrong. But that aside, uh, with we could stagger the high wind rails a little bit so one sits inside the other. I haven't quite decided how I'm going to do it yet, but there there will be a way of bringing this torch back, I still think somewhere back to here where it was originally, which then makes the, the follower thing um, back to where it, where it was. A uh, couple of things with the follower, it works brilliantly. Uh, I have now made some some wheel adjusters, so so we can adjust that. A um, little bit fine adjustment because it's on threaded bar instead of, uh, you know, Acme thread or something like that. To be honest, I don't really mind because we don't change the profile material that often. Uh, it's still nice and free. Um, sounds as grouchy as hell, but it's not. Uh, it spins nice and th th uh, free and, you know, and we've got the full range so we can, where we've got this gap here, with uh, this one here almost back to the edge, uh, it still still misses the frame here, which is a plus, right? <laughs> Didn't want to hit that. So there you go. That's a little update. That is now in my mind. Other than converting to aluminium, which a few guys have said, and I completely take on board, uh, is just cost. I mean, this thing costs are spiraling. The more and more I add to it, the more and more I take away. Different setups. Uh, it soon, it soon um, swallows up the old cash. So, but we're there. Uh, um, it's been cutting all week. Uh, here's some profiles we've been cutting. So you can see that that's the profile we've been cutting there. Uh, it's not half bad. We cut it out. We spin it around. There's another one there. Um, and then we just bend it around the, another one there and back there. So we make these frames. Um, and we just bend it around the tube that we've cut on the tube cutter. Um, it's not bad, it's, it, it works fabulous. 
Uh, the other thing, which Die Power is going to, I'm going to walk down here because I don't really want to show him, but he's going to watch, isn't he, obviously? Um, but is this. What the hell is that? Well, I'll give you a clue. It came from a Rolls Royce factory. Uh, and it is a stop rail, a nice long stop rail, uh, better part 2.8 meters stop rail. Uh, I'm going to CNC it, of course, so um, we'll be able to program in lengths of material and off, off our saw. Uh, I'm going to need to. We obviously got bearing here, so be able to put in all the lengths or put in our stock lengths, put in our cut lists and the stock will move up and down uh, quite nicely. I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into this. We've had a bit of a bash this morning because you can see all the uh, concrete dust on the floor and you know, obviously my favorite uh, unpainted stuff. I don't know why I don't like painting stuff. I just, I just don't, don't like painting. <laughs> um, I've got a powder coating company and I don't like doing that either. So uh, it is what it is. Uh, it's rat, that's the way I'm going to describe it. Um, there's my saw look, that is rat, okay. There's my CNC machine, that is rat, okay. If we go over here, uh, 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 do walk. Oh, oh, as he trips over bins and stuff, all my benches are rat. My lathe is pretty much rat, I don't paint anything. Uh, my water cooler that I made for my TIG torch which I will talk about at a later date. Rat, I haven't painted that. Toolings that I make for pressing out stuff. Rat, don't paint that. I hate painting. Absolutely loathe it. It's, it to me, it's, it's somebody else's job. Anyway, back to this. So, uh, what we've got is that it's, it's a big shaft. That is a 50 mil shaft. In here, well, all the day down here is a huge belt. You can't go all the way back up the other side. That belt is, if you can imagine, that is 60 mil, 70 mil um, profile. That belt just fits in there. So it's a hoofing great belt. Um, and a hoofing great motor is going to sit on there. So we've got holes and stuff in the top of here. I'll be able to make a bracket. I'll be able to bolt a chuffing great closed loop motor on there. Um, the rail. Um, is this way up is because a I like the Corten rusty look. No, I don't. Just don't like painting. Um, we'll be able to put we'll be able to put a box on here, a power box, and all the gubbings will be inside of it. It's nice and tight to the nice and tight to the motor that's going to hang here, and you can just about see coming up to meet us. It's quite hard to turn by hand, um, but this is the. This is the plate that's going to have the stop mounted to it. It's all pre-drilled, ready to go. Like I say, it came out of um, Rolls-Royce factory. Uh, they used it for cutting something, something very Rolls-Royce, no doubt. Um, I'm not even sure I've got it the right way up. Uh, I don't know, but that's the way I'm going to use it. Uh, inside here, all these bolts, uh, they hold a 40 mil high wind rail, 40 mil. I mean, that is one heavy thing. This thing took some lifting, actually. It's, um, it was a three-man lift to get it in the back of my van without damaging it. And uh, yeah, there's some weight in there. As you can see, I mean, with a 50 mil shaft for the uh, motor, 50 mil idler, or I think it's a 40 mil idler at the other end, down, all down there. Um, so yeah, we've got slotted holes on here. Um, we got it as close as we could, but the holes are slotted. Uh, mainly so that we can, we threw the saw up with a laser level this morning, so we know that the, we know this is bang up right, the machine's bang up right, it's dead level, and we will just get the bed level to that. It is pretty level where it is, but it is five mil low. The reason it's five mil low is that I need to put a cover over these bearings, like I've already said, and bring the cover up to here. So I'll just have a folded right angle coming off here, down here a little ways, shelf, if you like, where I can just cover all of this. I, aluminium won't last long um, with us scratching um, bloody great pieces of uh, steel across it. So we'll put a steel, um, 
sock. Let's call it a sock. We're going to put a steel steel cover, steel sock over the top of that so that we protect it. Um, did it cost me a bit of money? Mm, yeah, it cost me a little bit of money. Uh, it wasn't bad for what it is. Um, 500 quid for it as it is. I spent three hours putting it in to this state as we've got it at the moment. Uh, and I think I'll probably spend another less than 500 on it. I would say by the time I've got a closed loop motor driver, um, I've already got power supply, already got uh, the control systems and bits and pieces. It's the only thing I'm a little bit uh, confused about as to how I'm going to go about it is that I, I'm, I'm, it's a toss up between using Mac 3, which means I've got to have a computer here, which I'm not over excited about. Uh, my guys, uh, when it comes to the CNC machine, uh, you've got to have that um, because they do the drawing there, they do the sheet cam business there, and they, you know, and use my plasm there. Uh, this is just going to be uh, a bash the screen, get the stop to move thing. So I'll probably use um, use an Arduino. Um, it's going to go in a metal box anyway, so I'll use an Ar Arduino and just some real basic. Um, ACLL um, stepper library or something like that. Um, I'm going to use a Nextian display on it, so it's a touchscreen display, um, which is either going to be a blessing or a curse uh, because obviously bits of steel being waved around everywhere. I don't really want to crash the crash into that screen too often because they are quite expensive for what they are Nextian displays. I mean they're brilliant, but they are a little bit expensive. So there we go. That is where we are at. So I'm going to go home in a minute, um, have a look at the Arduino code that I need to do. I have got a little stepper motor set up at home already. Uh, I'm just going to flash the uh, the G code uh, libraries and everything to the Arduino, and then start messing with it and see what happens. Uh, yeah, I probably, yeah, I mean, I'm in two minds now. Uh, I think I'll just use straightforward stepper commands. It's not going to, it doesn't require speed. Accuracy, yes, it does require um, accuracy to win. I'd like to be within quarter of a mil if I can. So if I can get it cut within quarter of a mil, that is going to make everything so much better. Um, the next in display is, is such a nice thing to use because the display itself can pretty much do all the work for you all the heavy lifting, all the button coding and everything else, and all it does is sends quick commands to the Arduino. So you just pick them up on interrupt or whatever, and away you go. Uh, we're gonna have to have limit switches on it. So there'll be a limit switch, there'll be a homing limit switch. The, the stop I envisage coming over and having an adjustable, um, only, for, um, only for home adjustment so that we can adjust a, uh, a bar or the stop. So when the stop's all up here, doesn't come up much past here, then we'll have a, the stop will extend to the blade, which will be home. So uh, it's gonna have to be quite rigid. I kind of gathered that, but on saying that, the stop plate under here is so big that we can have one that goes this way up to, up to the blade. And we could, you know, we could flip that one out the way flip in another one that actually has an extension so that we can go past the end of the stop and we can sort of come out to you know here we could put an extra 500 mil on it that would give us a good three meter cut we don't make anything much bigger than three meters and if we do we just have to run a tape and it means that we could flop the stops i won't be going to say that later but we could flop the stops back out of the way and then just use it as a straightforward uh cut in bed and just slide it clean out the door. Uh, it's not been uncommon for my guys to use the forklift as a stop. They'll just drive it across the end there, um, work out what's got to be <laughs> clamped to it to, to get the right measurement and then that's where it goes. Uh, quite often they will drive the forklift up near enough, use the side shift on the, um, you know, on the carriage and just move it in so that it is right. Yes, anyway. So there we are. That is the next project. When I said I had a couple of exciting little projects coming up, uh, this is one of them. I've been meaning to do it only for about four years. Uh, the guy I bought this um, slide off of has had it three years. 
and uh, he jokingly said to me just now, I've had this three years and you've fitted it in three hours. So there we go. Um, it was a little bit big for what he wanted to use it for, but it's absolutely perfect for what we want to use it for. So there we go. If you do like the channel, then please subscribe. Um, I'm nearing that uh, thousand. I'm, I'm, I'm going to eke over the line, as it were. Uh, we've got lots more stuff coming up that I'd like to show you. Lots more um, projects coming up. Uh, we have got... Uh, yeah, there's a couple of things in here that's going to have to be CNC'd. Um, one, obviously, the, the stop, which we know about. And then over there, right in the distance, that turquoisey blue thing is a little um, hobby milling machine. Uh, guess what I want to do to that? So that is also going to be CNC'd at some point. Uh, I will also try to start doing more in the way of uh, build videos so you can actually see what's going on. I did make a, make a half-assed attempt at showing the build video of that. It's just... It's so time consuming. I really take my hat off to these guys like um, Oh Tony. Uh, you know, there are, there are so many out there that, that put so much effort into their videos um, and it must take so much time. Uh, Robert Murray Smith is another one who puts a huge amount of time into his videos. I don't know whether it's worth doing it because uh, they actually monetize it, whether they do or they don't, I don't know. Um, but fair play to them it is something I have not got the time for and I'll be quite frank with you yeah I'm not very good at it anyway so all my stuff generally is one hit one take and you get what I say as I go along I don't cut edit anything uh, the only thing I do is put a fade in and fade out and then pray so uh, anyway thanks for sticking with me uh, through all of this it is great uh, I get fantastic comments uh, you guys out there are bright people I will give you that you are bright bright people and I I'm envious in some respects um, because you really do know what you're talking about I get some brilliant suggestions and like I say die power when you watch this if you watch this I'm sure you will uh, this is what you were talking about uh, I made a few phone calls and this is what's turned up so uh, I'll let you know how I get on throughout the course of the week next Saturday probably stick in another vid it is absolutely tipping it down now I don't know whether you can hear it but it is absolutely chucking it down anyway so there we go that is where we are at with this thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe all comments will be responded to if they require so if they're questions uh, if the valley comments, they'll get a little like or a little heart because I love everybody. And you take care and stay safe.